here we have question number 16, paper 2, May, June 2014. And, yeah, paper 2, May, June 2014. Question number 16. Now, this question is about angles between lines and planes, three dimensional trigonometry, and so on. Okay, so this is again an area where some students do have problems. So we'll try to address those problems now. Okay. It tells us that this. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H is a cuboid. It tells us the length of A, B is 4, the length of B, C is 3, and the length of A, G is 12. A, G is like going from one corner all the way to the opposite corner on the other side in the top. Okay. And they told us to calculate the angle that A, G makes with the base A, B, C, D. Okay, now, A, G is the line. You see over here. That's a, that's a line going from A to G. Okay. Now, the angle that makes with the base A, B, C, D. Now, what does that mean? Well, you can think of that in a number of ways. Um, the angle between a line and a plane. So a, B, C, D is like a plane, flat surface. The angle between a line and a plane is the angle between that line, and you could think of it in a few ways. One way you could think of it as if you had a light shining from, in this case, above, okay, um, perpendicular to the plane where you've got to find the angle of that line on the plane. If that was a light shining, where would the shadow of that line fall on that plane? You can see it would fall between A and C. Okay, that is the angle therefore. That is the angle made between these two lines is the angle between the line and the plane. Okay, another way you can think about it is supposing uh, this was able to drop, it was like a stick that was able to drop, okay? Where would it fall if you just let go of it and there's no wind or anything like that? You fall directly along between A and C if it was able to fall. Okay, now, so we have this triangle, A, C, G. Now, this angle over here, this angle does not look like right angle. But in fact, it is a right angle. Okay, if you imagine the corner of the room that you might be sitting in. Look at the bottom corner of the room. You'll see that the floor and the wall meet at right angles. And this is a three-dimensional diagram. That's why it doesn't look like it's a right angle from the diagram itself. So just imagine you're looking at this triangle, okay, from right directly on. You would see a triangle that looks like this. Okay. It's always good to draw the triangle that you're using. Okay. Make it clear that's a right angle triangle. So it would look something like this. This would be a right angle, this would be C, that would be G, and that would be A, and that would be the angle we're trying to find. Now in this triangle, we, we only know the length of A to G. We don't know the length of A to C, and we don't know the length of C to G. So we only have one length. To find the angle, we need to have at least one more length in order to find it using a trigonometry. So plateau, angle triangles. So we got to look at some other part of this cuboid to see if we can find one of those other lengths. Now, again, looking if you're looking from above down and you look at the base, you'll see like a rectangle. Okay, it'll be like a rectangle in front of you. Look at the base. If you look at it from above. Okay, now the rectangle is something like this. You see that this is four centimeters, this is three centimeters, and this is A, this is B, this is C, and this is D. Now, if you notice, we have AC in the triangle that we drew above. And we also have an AC 
line from A to C look in this rectangle. And you'll notice that this is a rectangle, so the angles are corners are 90 degrees. So therefore, I can find the, length, the length of the side AC. Let me call it length Y. I shouldn't call it the same letter as on front of five. So that is a length Y. Okay, now that length Y can be found using Pythagoras. You have a right angle triangle, okay, and you have three and four as the two shorter sides. So you can say that Y squared is equal to three squared plus four squared. Most of you will recognize that. See, this is a three, four, five triangle. It gives you nine plus 16 which is the square root of 25, which is equal to 5. So y is equal to 5. Okay, so we know that y is equal to 5. y is the same as this length here. This is 5. This is 5 centimeters. And so now, knowing that this length is 5 centimeters, we can therefore find the angle using the fact that we know the adjacent and we know the hypotenuse. Okay? So the tangent of the angle we need, which is the angle between the line and the plane, is equal to the adjacent, sorry, not the tangent, I'm not talking about that. We're going to use SOCATOA. Okay, sorry about that, why did I say tangent? We've got the adjacent and the hypotenuse. And remember we got so ka toa we're going to use the cosine ratio. We have the adjacent and the hypotenuse. We say the cosine of angle X equals the adjacent over the hypotenuse. So X will be given by cosine, shift cosine, 5 over 12. So X will be, we take out our calculator, we have Shift, cosine, arc sign, 5 over 12, 5 divided by 12. Now, we must make sure that the template is in degree mode, and it is. And press equal. It gives us angle 65.375, 6, 65.375, dot, 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 continues on. So we have to write our answer. It doesn't tell us how to write the answer. So we, as it's an angle, we write our answer as 65.4 degrees to one decimal place. And there we have the answer for this question. Thank you very much for listening.